All right, let's talk a little bit about delay of repair as it applies to leak detection and repair, or LDAR. Our acronym for uh, delay of repair is DOR, so if I use that, you'll know what I'm talking about. Under our LDAR rules, we typically have a limited time within which we're supposed to successfully repair each leak that we find. Sometimes that's not possible. Typically on a federal rule, you have 15 days. If you can't repair it within that time uh, and you can't put it properly on delay of repair, then you could be facing substantial fines. Getting to uh, optimize that delay of repair program, working through the various areas of your staff between operations, engineering, maintenance, and environmental and LDAR can be a complex process, and that's something that we can help you with if you'd like. But let me go over the basics today. There's four reasons under the federal rules that you would be allowed to put something on delay repair. The first was if it is technically infeasible to repair that component without a process unit shutdown, then you may put it on delay of repair. If you have isolated that component and purged the lines so that it is no longer in contact with either uh, volatile organic compounds or hazardous air pollutants, which are the regulated portions under LDAR, then that component no longer or can be placed on delay of repair for an infinite period. Uh, there's also one where you do calculations to show that it would cause more emissions to purge all the lines the, that it, to allow that repair to happen without shutting down the unit than the leak continuing to the next plan shutdown would cause. So that's another way you can justify it. And the fourth reason is specific only to pumps. If you had successive pump leaks, and you feel like you're gonna to need to completely redesign your pump seal system rather than just replacing the seal over and over, you can get an automatic six month delay of repair to do that upgrade and design. For all of these, you're gonna to have to have a physical form signed by a responsible individual that certifies that one of these reasons is there because we call it delay of repair, but really what we're talking about is a license to leak. Since many of our units are on long run times, up to five to seven years, it could be leaking for a long time before you're able to get to this and repair it. So EPA wants you to be very sure before you put this on there, and you're certifying that when you sign these forms. Your form will also have to have the reason, and it's gonna to have to have an expected repair date. Those repair dates that you're planning for the future change, you're going to have to keep that form updated. So there's a lot to look at and go after here. Um, once you've put something on delay of repair, it's extremely important that when you have a process unit shutdown that you do get that repaired. If it's a planned large turnaround or major uh, maintenance effort, then obviously you would have to get that done during that time period. There also are unplanned small shutdowns that you may incur during a run that you may or may not be required to do, do delay a repair. We also have uh, an example in one of our uh, industrialized areas, the South Coast uh, Air Quality Management District of California around Los Angeles, that does not allow delay a repair at all. So they force manufacturers to do anything and everything to get these repaired even within a seven-day deadline. They have a shorter deadline than the federal. So their example has told EPA that there's really very little that is technically infeasible to repair without a shutdown, our number one reason. And so EPA is starting to look more critically at delay of repair. But EPA in looking at the performance out there is saying very few things are technically infeasible without a process unit shutdown. And so they're looking with a more and more critical eye at facilities that have long delay of repair lists. And when they have the chance to negotiate or, or put new requirements on those facilities that they feel might be somewhat abusing the delay of repair provisions, they're more likely to put some kind of a delay of repair cap on your program. So it's worthwhile to try to optimize this whole system, get your engineering, maintenance, operations, environmental people putting their heads together 
to come up with ways to maybe be a little innovative, whittle your delay of repair list down uh, on a voluntary basis before EPA steps in sometime down the road and makes it mandatory. We've only had time to cover a very few of the many nuances of delay of repair today, so we'd be happy for you to get in touch with us if you want to investigate this matter more. Thank you very much.